down on the conference floor where the Labour leader, Ed Miliband, made that speech yesterday. I was one of those watching with thousands of people here. It won't be, though, how the speech resonates in the hall. Of course, it'll be the message that gets outside and what the voters will think of it. Well, Ed Miliband joins me now. Morning. Morning. Welcome nice to, to be breakfast. with you. Um, the one thing I noticed yesterday was the, you, were, you used the words new bargain 13 times in the speech. Some people will be thinking, what on earth does he mean by new bargain? I think what I mean is that in too much of our society, in too much of our economy, the way it works doesn't help the hard-working majority in the country, doesn't speak to the values of the hard-working majority about something for something responsibility. And that's true in our economy parts of our economy and we'll perhaps talk about what that means parts of our welfare system and that's got to change and you know we had a massive financial crisis in 2007 8 and we can't go on with business as usual yes. and that's what my speech is about and that's what the new bargain is about you painted a very bleak picture you talked about a quiet crisis you said it's a failure boots culture a failure of the system we're rewarding the wrong people with the wrong values. Some would say those are values which were encouraged by a Labour government for 13 years. They're not values that have suddenly sprung up with a coalition government over the past 18 months. I think months. they've been values which have been too much part of our system for 20, 30 years, frankly. I think that's why we've got to change. But a Labour government had the power yeah, to change it. and we it. didn't do enough. And we didn't do enough. And why not? Well, because for a whole range of reasons. I think the main reason was that we thought, in particular, uh, some parts of our economy, like the financial services industry, were a good earner, that we could use that money to help people with taxes, help, help people in terms of public services, uh, and that that, would, that was a good thing. Now, that was a good thing for a time, but what we've discovered and what we now know is that some of that wealth wasn't a lasting wealth that was created and wasn't really done on the basis of the right lasting values of the British people. It's so more than that though, isn't it? It was more than just lax regulation. It was spending too much when you should have been saving. It was creating an economy that was based on spend and, and not on putting a little aside for when things went wrong. Well, I don't agree with you about that. I don't think that the issue of why we had a financial crisis was because of labour overspending. That's what the Conservatives say, but I don't agree with that. It didn't help that. though, did it? And no, even I... you said, we've lost credibility on the economy and that has to be well, one of the key reasons. Well, I'll tell you why. Why we have a, an issue that we've got to face up to, which is to win back trust on the economy, because we had a global financial crisis, uh, which we're now facing the consequences of. Now, I don't excuse us from blame for that. We should have regulated the banks better, something you referred to in your earlier question. But the question now and for the future for Britain is do we carry on as we are or do we change? And what I'm setting out is some ideas about how we need to change. Uh, whether it's to do with the way we change the way the banks work or our energy companies or the way the benefit system works. Let's get back to the values of the British people and let's start to reward that hard-working majority in our country. OK, let's look at one of those ideas in detail. And that was your idea about business. And you did very much seem to paint a society where we have good business and bad business. There's good business which are the wealth creators and the producers and the inventors. And then there's bad business which are the asset strippers. And the sense I got from your speech was you were going to tax and regulate them differently. Well, you said so. How will you do that in practice? I think we have good business practices and bad business practices. I think that's the key point. And, and what do I mean by that? What, what I mean is that there are some business practices which are, look like they're in the short-term interests of the business itself, but damage our economy. That's what we saw in parts of the banking industry before the financial crisis. But what will and you do we... to those businesses? Well, because you mentioned tax and regulation. Are you saying that civil servants will sit there and say, that's a bad business no, and we're going to ta sa tax them more heavily no, or no, regulate no, them No, I'm not saying strong. that. I'm saying we've got to set the rules in a way which encourages people to do the right thing. Let me just give you some specific uh, examples of, of how we can do that. We can encourage companies to engage in research and development. We brought in something called the Research and Development Tax Credit to give people an incentive to do that. That's a good thing uh, to do. We can fi find different ways of regulating our banks, for example. That's something that is happening already but needs to happen more. The energy companies. Now, look, take the issue of the energy companies because it's not about the individuals themselves who work in those companies but it is about the way the rules of the system work. So I, you wouldn't I tax them differently or regulate them differently no. because that's what you said in your speech. You said no. they've been taxed and regulated yeah, well, the same I've just in given, the past and, I've given you a, and I will change no, and that. I've given you an example right, of how, but not through the tax system. Well I have given you an example of how we can, can help with research and development for example. Help those companies who do the right thing not the wrong okay. thing. And I think that's what the British people want to see. What they want to see is an economy much more working in their interest 
interests and on the basis of their values. If this is good for business, why has the Institute for Directors criticised it? Why has the Confederation of British Industry criticised it? Why has Lord Jones, who's a former Labour trade minister, say it's a kick in the teeth? Why would they say those things? Well, because I think that people, understandably, uh, are nervous of change. They're nervous of doing things differently. Uh, and it's my job, and I'm determined to do that, to convince them that we do need change. And, you know, this isn't anti-business. It's anti-business as usual. Business as usual is not going to get us what we need uh, as an economy. And, you know, we can carry on as we are. We can say, oh, there was just a little local difficulty with the banking crisis, and let's just carry on. I don't think that's what the British people want. I think they want let, to say, yes, let's reward the people who create wealth, who create lasting wealth in this country. Let, let me give you another example because it goes to the way government works. I said in my speech that when government gives out major government contracts, it should say, well, it should only go to people who offer apprenticeships. Why do I say that? Because training of the workforce is a vital necessity for Britain in the future if we're not going to compete on the basis of low skills and low wages. And we can't just sort of leave it to chance, if you like, for whether that happens. So uh, I think this is not an anti-business message. It's a pro-business message. And it's pro-business for all of those people who say, actually, I'm a small business. I need a better deal from the banks, a better deal from the energy companies. You mentioned jobs. A lot of people are worried about their jobs during this financial crisis. We have, of course, uh, public sector strikes looming in November. You said nothing about that in the speech. Actually, didn't refer to the unions at all. And, uh, and the unions give Labour 80% of its funding. There are people out there who are at the moment thinking about whether they should strike in November, who want some guidance from you, they pay you the money, they want some guidance from you as to whether they should go out on strike to protect their pensions and their jobs. What would you say to them? Well, let me first pick you up on the point about whether I've spoken out on strikes, because I, I went to the Trade Union Congress ten days ago or so and uh, gave a speech which uh, got a, a rough ride uh, precisely about why I was against the strikes on June the 30th. What well, I, I say guess. to... But that was, but you well, let said me come that on was to because that. The, the negotiations are still yeah. continuing, well, which they are now, but balloting is underway, well, so people are having to well, make let, a decision. Well, let me come on to that because I think that there is a massive responsibility on both sides, the union side and the government side, to negotiate in good faith. I want to see change in relation to the way uh, public sector pensions work. There does need to be change, but it needs to be change that is fair. It needs to be change that is fair to those workers and fair to the taxpayer. Now, I don't think the government is negotiating in good faith. They've come along and they've just imposed a 3% tax rise on public sector workers without consultation, without following the recommendations of their own report. The job of the government is to negotiate in good faith. There's two months till Do that strike back happens. Do the strikers or not? When well, they're the making a decision well, about whether to go well, on strike. Well, the strike is two. The, the potential strike is two months away, Sean. I'm not going to get into hypotheticals about whether when there is, whether there is a strike or not. We'll see whether there is. What I'm going to say is let's avoid the strike happening. You were very keen to say I am my own man when you were at mm -hmm. that podium yesterday, and you said I am not Tony Blair, and then paused for a reaction, and there was a jeer. In the conference call. Well, it's not a jeer I share. So why did you say it in the first place? You're clearly wanting a reaction. No, what I'm saying is Labour's changing. And look, Tony Blair and Gordon Brown were towering figures in our movement. And they were towering figures for the public. Some people liked them, some people didn't. But people need to know that we're doing things differently now because it's a different era. The challenges are totally different. But this the is a man who's won you three elections. Yeah, and, I... and to stand there and say, I'm not Tony Blair and get a jeer from the crowd well, and sort of well, acknowledge hang on. it. You well, know. hang on a minute. I said they, both of them, Tony and Gordon, were great men who achieved great things. I have the utmost respect for them, for them both. But look, the challenges they faced, Tony Blair was elected 17 years ago. That's an era ago. And we're in a new era, and we need a new reckoning for a new era. And that's what I'm determined to do. And look, there is a big choice in British politics today. I don't think David Cameron wants to change the way things work in our country. I don't think he wants to say, let's change the values that underlie our economy, our welfare state, in the right way that speak to the British people. That's what I want to do, and that's what I set out yesterday. Okay. Ed Miliband, Labour leader, thanks very much for joining us this morning.